How's it going guys? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. In today's video, I'm taking a break from the news and I'm going to do a 2.5 year check-in with the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck came out in February of 2022, so the end of August is about where 2.5 years is and things have gotten a lot different. So I'm going to break this video down into hardware, software, and then some suggestions on where I'd like to see things go because Valve is one of the only companies out there who actually pays attention to their community and directly implements features that they asked for, which is great. So starting out with the hardware, even though there's only the Steam Deck LCD and the Steam Deck OLED, when you dig a little bit deeper, there is a lot more to talk about there because they've changed a lot behind the scenes about this actual device since it launched way back in February of 2022. So my first Steam Deck, I got it right on the day it came out and it had a lot of problems. The buttons would stick, which was annoying. The trackpads had different vibration motors, so they felt different. And the actual click of the track pads was like totally indiscernible. Like when you would click it, I was like, did I click? Did I not click? And then the menu would pop up and it was just a weird experience. Also, my triggers were completely different where the right one was nice and punchy and the left one was super loose. The bumpers had a different click. It was not a great device. And on top of that, my LCD screen was plagued with an issue that a lot of launch Steam Decks had, which was screen bleed. You probably know what this is, but essentially it's much easier to see if you're in a dark room. The screen in black scenarios, like where it's in a loading screen or it's loading up, you'll see like a halo of light coming from either the side or the corner of the screen and it's not consistent across the entire thing. Now there was a way to fix this back then by pushing really hard on the area you had bleed from your screen and that would fix it for a little bit or you could just send it into Valve and they would fix it for free. So that's nice. I like that Valve would RMA it but like when, initially like when you would send in your Steam Deck for RMA you were out of that thing for like a month because of the FedEx shipping that they used initially before they had different shipping centers, that Coldstream Illinois shipping center was very far from LA. So if I send in my Steam Deck for RMA, which I had to do, two weeks to get there, a day or two to fix it, two weeks to get back, I basically didn't have my Steam Deck for the entire month of August of 2022, which sucked. But that was my launch Steam Deck because I actually got two Steam Decks. The first one was the launch Steam Deck that I bought off a guy on Marketplace and he was kind enough not to do a markup on it. He had just bought two of them and we got to him before everyone else, which was awesome. The second Steam Deck I got was my official pre-order. Now that one was a 512 gigabyte one. I'm pretty sure I got it in March or April of that year. And I was surprised to find that all of the issues my initial launch Steam Deck had, like the screen bleed, the button issues, everything like that, those were all fixed on the second Steam Deck I got, was which was just a couple of months after the launch of the Steam Deck. Now it could be luck of the draw, but I did a Reddit search at the time and I'm pretty sure I did a video on this and it seemed like everyone who had the issues in the first couple of weeks stopped reporting them after around the first month. So to see Valve do a turnaround on fixing components that weren't working that quickly, that was awesome. There was one negative change they did behind the scenes with the 64 gigabyte model. They started using a cheaper drive, I think a year or so into the Steam Deck's life cycle, which ran a little bit slower. It didn't really result in real world noticeability of it running slower because it already ran kind of slow. But I think most people who buy the 64 gigabyte one after they get a one terabyte micro SD card and fill it up completely in a day or two, uh, they probably just go and upgrade the SSD to begin with, which is what I did. I paid $279 for an, a used Microsoft Surface 2230 drive, and that has also been improved since the Steam Deck came out because those drives are starting to be made by WD Digital and WD Black and all these companies, and they're so much cheaper now. Like you can get a two terabyte drive for less than I paid for a one terabyte drive. So that's another huge benefit of how the hardware has evolved since the launch to the Steam Deck. Then everything changed when they introduced the OLED. They started selling the back stock for cheaper of the original Steam Deck LCD. They introduced two kind of refreshed models of it that came along with some improvements. But with the OLED, for the increased price, not only do you get an OLED screen, which is great, but they fixed everything. The trackpads were much better. The vibration motor was much better. The battery life is about two times as good. The APU got a little bit of a performance bump that really results in not only a couple of more frames per second in most games, you throw at it, but also it gets rid of those 1% low frame time stutters, which is awesome. And they brought out their first limited edition model, which I think is the best limited edition anything I've ever bought because it's black and orange, like the orange box colors, but that's also Halloween colors. And the only issue I've had with that hardware is an issue that's plaguing everybody, it seems like, who gets the limited edition Steam Deck OLED. And that's that the screw on the bottom panel, like the back cover, the either the right or left screw is too tight and it 
it causes a little crack in the clear plastic. Now, unfortunately, you can't buy parts for the limited edition model on sites like iFixit. So the only way to get that fixed is to send it in for an RMA and I'm just not doing that. So I'm living with a little crack in my back panel, but that's really the only hardware issue I've had. So, you know, largely it's a big improvement in every way over the LCD launch model that I had. And then the second one I got with my pre-order. So I'm very happy with where the hardware is on the Steam Deck. As far as the software goes, that also has come a long way. I remember during the launch, I mean, like when you were scrolling through your library or moving between tabs of SteamOS 3.0, there was always drop frames. There was always a delay. You'd get to the next screen and all the images would be grayed out as they slowly like pop their way in. It was still missing features. Other features didn't work. They moved pretty quick on updating it and it really only took a year to get it in a state that it probably should have launched in. But a lot of the promises they made about it coming out fully to be able to be installed on other PCs, those have not happened yet. And the closest they've gotten to it is uh, saying that they're going to support the ROG Ally and the ROG Ally X with the full release, which is a huge disappointment to me. And in typical Valve fashion, they have introduced some cool features like being able to change your keyboard and being able to change your boot movie, but they just like announce these features, put stuff in the Steam Points shop and then never update it. Like they've added in a couple since they launched the boot movie store, but they haven't really kept up with it. And the best way to get those still is to do it from third party resources, which kind of sucks. And then also they launched with a few different keyboards, never released any more of them until the launch of the Steam Deck OLED, which got you some limited edition ones. If you bought the limited OLED, they have not added any keyboard since then. I'd like to see a little bit of an improvement there. Like you could do so many different keyboards and they could work with third party developers to do keyboards themed around games. And speaking of themes, where are themes in SteamOS 3.0? They have third party ones. Like people have made mods that can completely change the overall UI of SteamOS, but Valve it has not at all. They've left it exactly the same pretty much as it launched. And I'd love to see themes on the Steam Deck. So right now they have the same big problem that the PS5 has, which is no themes. But in terms of overall usability, everything's gotten better. I do a lot of stuff on the desktop side of SteamOS, whether it's getting video footage for B-roll for these videos or installing games like the Silent Hill 2 Enhanced Edition. That was the first time I really noticed how much quicker everything has gotten with the Steam Deck OLED and the new version of SteamOS. I got the Enhanced Edition of Silent Hill 2 on my launch Steam Deck and it took me the better part of an afternoon, but I wanna play the original version of Silent Hill 2 before the remake. So I set it all up on my Steam Deck OLED the other day and it took 15 minutes. So everything just from top to bottom with SteamOS has been streamlined and with all the features they've added in and everything like that and fixes that they've added to the overall speed of how it works, I'm just crossing my fingers that we don't have long to wait for the full release where you can install it on other PCs. Now they have released the new big picture mode, which essentially turns your PC into a Steam Deck like operating system where you can see the whole overlay and everything like that. I just want to remove all the Windows processes that slow down games on my PC and I want to play games without stuttering. So the only way to do that is to get full SteamOS 3.0. So hopefully Valve in the near future actually finishes the work they have to do and releases it. I've already talked about a few suggestions for the future, but I thought of some new ones lately that I think would be pretty cool. So I don't know if you guys saw this, but Lenovo is releasing a Legion Go Lite apparently. I don't know if it actually came out, but it leaked and it looks like it's going to be just a slimmed down sort of lower profile version of the Legion Go. And that got me thinking about how cool it would be for a Steam Deck Lite to happen where maybe they take out the track pads, maybe they make the screen a little bit smaller, keep the OLED, but make it a little bit more of a slim profile machine that can cut the price off of the Steam Deck because I feel like that was a huge jump for the Nintendo Switch that really got it out to even more people than it initially did. I know it sold extremely well at launch, but I feel like the light only being $200 is what really got people in, like my wife when she wanted to play Animal Crossing. I feel like if you introduce a Steam Deck light that strips out a lot of the PC centric features like the track pads and everything like that, that could be a cool way to get more people in who are kind of curious and are kind of sitting on the fence and they just need a little bit of push to fall over. And especially if they can reduce the price point by releasing something like that, that would be a no brainer purchase for a lot of people. Of course, you guys also know that I would really like to see some sort of actual hardware, like a console style machine. We saw ETA Prime just made one with a broken Steam Deck where he made an enclosure for the motherboard and everything like that. And then you can control it with a controller. You don't even need a screen. You can just output to a monitor. That would be super easy to develop for Valve. And it would be sweet to see them actually take steps into releasing Steam machines that are 
actually good and made by Valve. The real thing I want to see improved though is the deck dock. Now I was very excited for this to come out because I love using official hardware and for the price it is, it's just not good enough. It, updating it sucks. You have to unplug literally everything from it. So if you're like me and you were using it as a USB-C hub for your PC because I use a laptop, uh, I, I had to stop using it and buy a different one because every update, it got annoying having to unplug everything of course, but it seemed like every update would either break a USB port, it would stop it from waking up with my PC, the monitor would stop working, and with the Steam Deck OLED specifically, I had months where I wasn't able to get the OLED to output to my monitor when I was using the Deck Dock. Now I know the price is high because they include another charger with it and it doesn't really work at all unless you have the charger plugged in, but still, for the price they're charging, and especially considering how cheap and better constructed all of the competitor devices are, I think Valve needs to completely rework this. Another thing I would like to see them do is talk to Microsoft and get them to just make the Xbox Game Pass app work on PC, or at the very least, talk to Microsoft and say, hey, if you want to keep releasing your games on Steam, you have to have cross-save with the Xbox Series X. I was really excited for the Series X this generation because I thought it would finally be the gen where all my saves would transfer between my PC with games like Starfield and Forza Horizon 5 and my Xbox Series X. That has not been the case. Both Starfield and Forza Horizon and Forza Motorsport, if you play them on Steam, even though you have to log in with Xbox services, you don't get cross save, which really sucks and basically just kept me de facto playing the PlayStation 5. Like I have not turned on my Series X in years at this point, which is crazy. And speaking of Valve talking to third party publishers, I really think Valve needs to step in and start talking to companies like Activision and EA and say, hey, if you're selling a game on Steam, we already have built-in DRM. So you don't need to have launchers. You don't need to have extra DRM that doesn't work on the Steam Deck, like how all these games like Battlefield 1 are getting updated with new anti-cheat that doesn't work on Steam OS. Just strip that stuff out because people are buying these games for real money. And all you're doing is encouraging them to either strip them from a Switch cart or just pirate the game to run on their Steam Deck. So you're losing money by having a launcher in the long run. The other thing they need to do is get the word out there about having specific Steam Deck presets for games. There have been a few examples like Cyberpunk 2077 and I'm pretty sure uh, Helldivers 2 just got one, but there's just not enough adoption of having an actual Steam Deck preset that runs good out of the box because that's what's going to help people feel good about buying a Steam Deck if they're coming from something like a Nintendo Switch. And finally, they need to overhaul the verification process. It sucks. Like some games are verified and they don't work at all. Like The Last of Us Part 1 is the most noteworthy example. Some games are not verified and they work completely fine. It's just a total crapshoot. And the verification checks that they do don't matter to most people. Like I'd argue that most people playing on the Steam Deck could not care less if the text on the screen is tiny with subtitles, but they do care if the game runs at 30 FPS at a minimum. So I'd like to see Valve come up with some sort of verification process that just says, hey, this game runs at an acceptable frame rate at medium or low settings, or says, hey, Hey, this game you'll have to drop it down to the lowest settings and use FSR performance mode to get an acceptable frame rate or just say it doesn't work at all and actually have that be accurate because unsupported is a circle with a line through it and instead of you know understanding that that means it's not technically supported on the Steam Deck, but it might work, people just assume the game doesn't work at all. Like I see articles all the time saying that games don't work because they're unsupported and nine times out of 10, that's just not the case. But yeah, that kind of rounds out my thoughts with the Steam Deck. It's still my favorite handheld of all time and I'm pretty sure it's my second most used device after my PlayStation 5. Like I paid a lot of money for my laptop expecting to use it a lot more than I do and then they announced the Steam Deck OLED right after and that's basically become my de facto gaming PC. I love playing old games like Dead Rising or Resident Evil 2 through the GOG version. And I also love playing new games like Ghost of Tsushima and everything else because like for some reason, games that shouldn't run on a handheld run just fine on the Steam Deck. It's a great device and it's only gonna get better. I'm just like patiently crossing my fingers that they do a light version, a desktop version, maybe a version that has a Thunderbolt port or they start talking about the Steam Deck too soon because we're finally getting next gen games that are only on the PlayStation 5 and Series X and S, and they're leaving the PS4 and Xbox One behind. And with more of those games, we're gonna see less and less of them work on the Steam Deck. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for you in today's video. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.